the president unveiled his new budget for 2013, he made sure to appeal to one of the groups hit hardest by the recession, the young. Now, this Congress needs to stop the interest rates on student loans from doubling this July. That's pretty important. Between the increases we've provided in Pell Grants, these tax credits, keeping interest rates low, all that's going to help. Well, this, as a new, a new Pew Research study reveals, 41% of Americans acknowledge that it is our young people who are bearing the brunt of our economic failings. Uh, they, fortunately, because they're going to be here the longest and deal with the biggest mess, also have the most incentive to fix it. Uh, we are breaking it down with Matt Siegel, co-founder and president of Our Time. Uh, Matt, the nice thing about being the one and the, representing the generation who will bear the brunt of the problems from all the horrors that we discuss all the time is that you guys do have the biggest incentive to fix it because you're screwed, really. We absolutely have the biggest incentive to fix it. And I actually think that if we can control costs of higher education from continually, continually inflating, we have a decent chance of fixing a lot of this huge $1 trillion student loan debt problem. So and that's what the president talked logic. about. To walk well, us through your logic. Yeah, you know, the logic is as follows. You have a lot of people who need to go to college because unlike ever before, unless you have a college degree, you can't compete in the global marketplace. Looking at the statistics, even if you do have a college degree, it, it usually doesn't help that much anymore. But, so, but we've sold the narrative that you need to go to college, which is a true narrative. So more people are enrolling. Meanwhile, public and private universities are not keeping their costs in check. Uh, tuition is outpacing the cost of living. It's outpacing health care costs at a dramatic degree. And as our website says today, in honor of Valentine's Day, a student loan is forever, essentially. And so we've taken more and more young people, given them student loans to pay for college. Meanwhile, we're only throwing more money for them to borrow to go to college rather than making sure that college is accessible. And so what the president announced in his speech on Monday, which is actually a major step in the right direction, is basically saying, we're not going to give you more federal money to get more students in your institution unless you keep costs in check. Otherwise, you know, we're going to go broke as a nation past how broke we already are with $15 trillion. And, and, and to, to that end, wouldn't the most rational way to keep costs in check for a university would be force them to disclose where they're spending their money? I mean, that's what we do in the normal marketplace. Is, of course. Is if I'm concerned that you're taking advantage of me <laughs> and I'm going to spend $50,000 a year giving you money for some service, typically what I'd like to do is see how the $50,000 that I just gave you would be spent such that I could see maybe I spend $10,000 and get more for less money. What is the barrier to forcing all these universities that get all this taxpayer money, private or public, they both get tremendous taxpayer benefits, from being forced to disclose what they're spending the money on so that we can stop doing this. They don't want to be held accountable. I, I mean, know that, this, but this that's, what, that's they what, have huge I know audience. they don't want to be held accountable. Have, Why even, do we have to do but that? But we've talked about for-profit colleges. The non-profit colleges are just as bad. I know. They hire lobbyists in Washington. They go in and they're basically like, we want all this federal money with no strings attached. None. And meanwhile, you can't hold us accountable to keep our tuition in check. You can't make us spend that money for learning. Instead, we're going to invest it in a football field or we're going to invest it in a new housing complex. It's going to inflate tuition even more. It's nonsense, which is why our politicians need to actually stand up to these lobbyists. And actually, the students need to realize that the, four, that the higher education institutions are hiring lobbyists who are working <laughs> against their interests. You know, if we, if we, With their insane. tuition money. I agree. So hang on. So it's basically, I take out a loan. I give the loan money to the institution. The institution takes the loaned money to lobby against my interests to, so that I have less information about what the school is doing. So such that it's harder for me to make a more informed decision about which school I'm going to go to and I not and I have more opacity as to why I have all this debt afterwards. And you're saying nobody wants to fix the broken educational market well, the that do. is forcing the students <laughs> to pay obscene sums of money into a black hole the problem is that the no students, one will disclose what's going students on. students don't know what they're signing up for. And that's the major problem. They don't know, and, and this is why we translate these issues on our website, ourtime.org, every day. Because no one knows that they're signing up 
for a student loan that essentially is going to become more and more expensive each year. You're going to have to take out more loans with the path we're heading unless we pressure colleges to start to say, let's take our cash we're sitting on, like major corporations, and invest it in access and, and, and learning services. And like you've talked about, the cost of learning is actually going down. It's collapsing. But meanwhile, the cost of education is going up. Why does that dichotomy exist? Greedy no bastards. Other reason than greedy bastardism. <laughs> you got it. So that's issue one. Now, with regard to the Pew study, yeah. then there's joblessness, which is just the cruel irony of the debt. We take all of the debt under the, the notion we're going to get a job. It leads to moving back home with your parents. We have a lot of work left to do. And which talk is about it in your job store. Which is why it's so exciting that we have so much time, and it's so we should be so grateful to be as young as both of us are, because we have a lot to do. I agree. So fortunately, we've got a lot of time on our hands. Amen. This is a long list. Um, we'll see you at our college tour next week. See You're coming to meet week. us in Chicago? Evidently, you, uh, I'm now committed. All right, fantastic. Week from Friday, uh, one of our young guns, uh, our friend from our time. Uh, anyway, Young Americans, the focus during the next leg of the 30 Million Jobs Tour, as I was just saying. Uh, three American universities next week, one in Chicago, as you might have just heard. Full details on everything that will happen with that tomorrow. Uh, and, of course, we're in-depth today in terms of on the way that we learn, the way that we pay for it in Greedy Bastards. Now, four weeks strong on the New York Times bestseller list. High five, high five. Um, thanks to everybody for engaging in that conversation with us. And if you want to learn more, you can always head to DylanRadigan.com. In fact, we just posted a podcast of a really wonderful radio conversation this morning here in New York with WNYC's Brian Lair about why it is that I'm not a liberal or a conservative, but may just be some sort of cowboy madman. I wasn't sure where we ended up with it, but we had very lot of solutions, which is